it's time to do a heat treat. So I have my Leatherman with a T10 bit in it, and we're gonna take this blade off. Be careful not to lose the washers. The blade may look a little rough now, but it's going to get pretty heavily oxidized when it's in the kiln. So after heat treat, we'll clean it up and smooth everything out nice. I'm going to load the kiln. Got the blade, and I'm going to lean it right up against one of those pins. Then we're going to start the kiln up. And I'll come back after the knife has reached proper temperature and soak time and I'll show quenching it in oil. And there you can see both the kiln and the pot of oil we have down here, which is heated up to 130 degrees, which is the perfect temperature to quench the knife. So we're gonna open this and pull the knife out and quench it. the blade in the oil up and down, not sideways, because when that steel is hot, if you agitate it sideways, you have a good chance of bending the blade. The goal here is to get it below a thousand degrees pretty quickly. Gonna wipe it off a little bit and give you a look at it. Here's what the blade looks like coming out of the oil. Sorry for the noise in the background. We've got the neighbors are mowing their grass. Let's give it a file test. The file skates across the surface. It doesn't cut into the steel. So we have a nice hard blade. I'm gonna put this aside, let the kiln cool down, and we have to go through two tempering cycles. After finishing the heat treat, I cleaned the blade up on my belt grinder. So as you can see, it's looking pretty good now, the nice convex grind on it. So next, we're gonna put it back on the knife and then sharpen it. I added an additional washer on here because it helped make the blade more stable. There may be an ever so slight stock thickness. Just a little wiggle. Okay. Let's get this thing sharp. Now to work on convex blades, I really like water stones. So I have my stones soaking in the bucket here. These are double-sided stones. So I have four different grits to work with. These need to soak for five or 10 minutes before you can use them. Let's start with the core stone. Now, in order to sharpen these, to sharpen the convex, a curved edge on the flat stone, you have to give a gentle rocking action to the knife. It's not hard to do once you get the hang of it. There you can see what we're doing. 
you can see the part that's getting cloudy. And we're going to go until we get a, a burr. We'll probably work back and forth, do a little bit on each side. That way we can keep it kind of even, but the goal here is to work towards a burr. You need a little more water on the stone. As you go with these, you have to keep adding a little more. I don't know what it is. There's just something relaxing about using water stones. These are more for simple steels. You don't want to use these on super steels. You wouldn't want to sharpen S90V, K390. I think even something like MagnaCut would be pushing the limits of these stones. I have used 3V on these stones before. And by the time you do a reprofile and get what you want, you have a little dish in the stone. And once you start to get too much of addition to stone, this is a flattening stone. So then you can flatten your water stones. O1 can be run hard. Well, it should be run over 60. If you're going to run your O1 at less than 60, I think you're wasting the performance of the steel. And at a lower hardness, if you run it at 57, 58, you may as well be using 1095 because at a similar hardness, you're going to get similar edge retention. 1095, while after quench, is about 66 or so, you can't leave it that hard because it's very brittle at a high hardness, where 01 retains a lot of its toughness and isn't as brittle. So 01 is a great choice in your simple carbon steels because just a few additions that it has give it some really good properties. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, we've got a burr on this side. That means that we're ready to go to the next stone. see that scratch pattern is changing. Now I have a burr on this side over here. You can see that stone coming up. These stones are kind of soft. While they do have a, a decent grit to them, a decent aggressive grit, they're not very hard stones. And that's one of the reasons why you can't use them with super steels. Hit this burr all down that edge. So let's lightly go a couple stropping passes.
You can hear the difference on this one. This stone is harder. You probably see a little bit of shine starting in a few areas there. There we go. And for this, we're gonna use our standard black and white compounds. And more on this side. Put a little fresh white compound on. Feels pretty good. Okay, that's pretty good. Next step is going to be to take the blade back off and do a vinegar bath to blacken it. We're going to take the blade and put it in this cup of vinegar. Now, one of the things that he wanted to do was a scissors mod on this Leatherman. Now, I have looked where you can take one of these small tools out and put in a pair of scissors instead. So we have to make a decision on which one to try. 
since this is a woods tool, I say we keep the awl because you can always get a can open if you need to. And we'll ditch the can opener and we'll put scissors in. Now this is a Leatherman rebar and this tool I have extensively modified. And one of the things that I put in here was a pair of scissors. And these tools are the same profile as the Wave. These actually are Wave scissors. And I'm pretty sure these are the same also. So instead of spending the money and getting another pair of scissors, I'm going to take this pair out that I put in this rebar and we're going to test them out in the signal. If they work, you can just buy me a new pair of scissors. After a bit of work, I got the scissors to fit. did require shortening this and grinding that handle off, the handle that stuck out to the side, and also on this blade had to be hollowed out a little bit because down inside the tool you can see it right there, there's a little bump. That's a stop for the blade release mechanism. So after accounting for both of those, the scissors now close. and the pliers close and the lock. The lock is a little, you gotta flex them just a little bit to get the lock on. And once you open them, the scissors come right out. Before I ground that little relief in there, the scissors would be stuck down there and you couldn't get them out. You actually would have to get a screwdriver under here and pop it up because there's no way you could do it with your nail. One thing it does is it makes the nail nick on the screwdriver a little harder to reach. You may want to pop the scissors out first. Or if you get your nail in here down in the corner, you can get it out. And then we still have the awl. The signal is now finished. I took just a little bit more off of the back of the blade so that the lockup is about where it should be. It was a little too early for my liking. So it holds closed nice, opens one handed sharp. That's going to be it for this one. This custom blade and the scissors mod for the Leatherman Signal.